Hi, my name is Dr. Stephanie Ajadi. I'm the clinical director of Ready Care's Great Neck Location. I'm also a vestibular therapist. And I'm going to talk to you today about BPPV, or benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. Uh, it's very common. We treat it a lot here in our Great Neck office, uh, along with our Farmingdale and the home care department. Uh, it's commonly caused by head trauma and ear infection, but in most cases is idiopathic. And what happens when patients come in with BPPV is that they complain about the room spinning. And uh, with that, if you look at the signs behind it, in your inner ear, you have the semicircular canal. And within the semicircular canal, there's the endolith, the fluid within the inner ear. And the cupola is the thing in the inner ear that moves around and gives you a sensation of how the body's moving, uh, how your head's moving, and it stimulates the vestibular nerve. And when you have BPPV, there's debris within the endolith, within the semicircular canal that's moving around, and that gives a sensation of the room spinning. And often we have patients that come in and say they need to reset the crystal, and the crystal is the otolith, the debris within the inner ear that we are resetting with the epley maneuver if it's the posterior canal. Um, so the posterior canal accounts for 85 to 95 percent of BPPV. Uh, you could also have like a lateral or an anterior BPPV, or they could come in with. Uh, vestibular symptoms that ca are caused by the central nervous system or something going on within the brain, um, which we treat as well uh, after they are seen by a doctor. Um, with the BPPV, um, the gold standard of testing is the Hallpike Dix, which I'm going to show to you later along with the Epley's Maneuver. Uh, so with the hall pike sticks, you are going through that quick movement, jolting their head back uh, to move the crystal within the inner ear. And you're looking for the nystagmus. Uh, you want to look at the latency, the duration, and the direction of the nystagmus. Uh, so usually with BPPV, there's like a 5 to 20 second uh, latency. So the dizzy, the nystagmus doesn't come on right away. And the duration is typically a top 60 seconds. So usually if we have patients that come in and they say, like, my dizziness is all day long, we're not usually thinking BPPV. Uh, we'll do the whole pike dicks to rule it out, but it's very rare that it would be a true BPPV. Um, so once you look at the nystagmus, uh, if it's the posterior canal, which is again the 85 to 95% of all BPPV, you'll see a torsional nystagmus. Um, if it's an upward beat, you usually think central nervous system. And if they are a direct access patient, that case will refer out right away uh, because we want to rule out anything with the central nervous system that at us as physical therapists cannot treat. Um, if it's a lateral or downward beat, um, you could think lateral canal. So if the whole pipe dix is negative on the, both the right and left side, we will do the rule test to check for the lateral canal. Um, if that tests negative, it could be an anterior canal, which I personally usually refer out for as well. Uh, because that's usually like 1-3% to 3 of all vestibular cases and a little trickier to treat. Um, so I'm going to show you what we typically do. Um, I'll show you the whole pike dicks today uh, to test for vertigo and then I'll show you an Epley's maneuver as well to, to show you how we treat the BPPV of the posterior canal, which is again 85-95% to 95 of our patients. Keep in mind the patient that I have today is not a BPPV patient, so you won't be seeing this diagnosis. So this is Daniela. Um, she works here at Ready Care, and she's going to be my patient to show you the whole pipe dicks. Uh, so before I start the, the test, I do let them know this is a pretty quick movement. Um, if you have a senior citizen, um, we usually put a pillow on top of the table because we don't want to bring them so much into extension. Um, but with her, she's young, she could tolerate it. So I do just lower the head of the table over here. Um, before I do this maneuver or do the Epley's treatment, 
we do rule out for VBI. Um, so we do the test with the maximum cervical rotation uh, with the patient talking to make sure there's no occlusion in the neck at all, uh, in the arteries in the neck. Uh, and we know that it's safe for us to do this test and do the treatment. Um, so again, keep your eyes open. It's going to be a quick movement. I'm going to bring you back. Just look at me. So over here, we're going to hold it again for 30 seconds to 60 seconds, uh, depending on the symptoms. Uh, you want to check for latency. Um, usually, again, with BPPV, it's a 5 to 20 second latency. You want to check for duration, uh, BPPV again, under 60 seconds, as I mentioned earlier in the video. And you want to check for the type of nystagmus. Um, so the eyes are open over here. Uh, one of the cool things that we have here as well at ReadyCare, um, we have the goggles that project the eyes onto a larger screen. Um, so if it's hard for us to tell uh, what type of nystagmus the patient has, um, we are using the goggles to project the eyes so we can see it a bit better. Uh, so she's fine here. Um, so let's say she has the left side of BPPV. So I just did the test for the left side. The head was turned to the left. We're testing the left ear. I'm going to go in and treat the posterior canal BPPV. Um, so this is not as violent, uh, but we do also make sure that we check for BDI before doing this treatment each time the patient comes in, just to cover our bases, make sure we're safe. Um, so again, keep your eyes open. I'm going to be behind you this time. Um, I'm going to lower your head into extension. We're going to stay in each position for uh, about 30 to 60 seconds, depending on your symptoms. If you have any dizziness, I want you to communicate that to me, okay? Okay. All right. So lie back with me. And with this treatment, um, we're basically moving the otolith, the crystal, uh, back into position. Um, you can't do this quickly. Um, the reason why I do keep the position in each position, the patient in each position for 30 to 60 seconds is because the otolith moves through the fluid very slowly. Uh, so you want to make sure that you're getting it done properly. Um, and also, if the patient did have symptoms, again, she's not a real patient, I, my rule of thumb is usually to wait 30 seconds after the patient's final symptom. So if they have a duration of 60 second symptoms, I wait another 30 seconds. So I could be in this position for a, a minute and a half if I have to. So once she's in this position, let's say 60 seconds past, I'm gonna move your head to the other side. Usually in this position, the first position that we were just in, she's gonna have a lot of dizziness. Um, this position, she should get some relief to her dizziness. So we're gonna stay here again. I'm checking the eyes, making sure she's okay. Uh, checking the latency, the duration, the direction of the nystagmus. Um, and she shouldn't have any symptoms in this position if you're doing it properly. Okay, what I'm going to have you do, do not move your head. I want you to bend your left knee for me. We're going to turn onto your right side. Again, don't move your head, okay? Just roll over to your right side for me. All the way over. Keep going, move your shoulder too. Keep going. Come on. So I also add a little chin tuck in this position. This third position, if you're doing it properly again, the patient should have some dizziness. Um, it, it, it's a good sign if they do. So I'm going to get down, check her eyes, make sure they're open, check the duration, the latency, the direction of the nystagmus here. Okay, and what I want you to do, don't move your head again, I want you to grab onto my elbows, right here, nice and firm, and drop your legs off the edge of the table, okay? Both of them. Okay, and 
trust my arms. We're going to come up together. We're going to sit up. Mm -hmm. Do not move your head. Keep your head facing down, okay? Get legs off the table, too. All right, and we're going to end in this position. If the technique is done properly, uh, the patient shouldn't have any dizziness here. Usually I have them keep their head down for one minute here. Um, and after the treatment, you're okay? Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. You're a fake patient, so. so. <laughs> Usually after this position, I do some patient education. Um, what I recommend after this treatment is that they don't lie flat uh, for about 48 hours. Um, I recommend the recliner or sleeping with several pillows. Um, and typically this side where they have the BPPV, so today we're treating the left ear, I recommend that they do not sleep on the left side long term. Um, uh, usually there is people who have BPPV have like a 10 to 18 percent chance of getting it again. Um, and I find with my patients typically they do get it again if they tend to sleep on that ear that's affected. Uh, so I do recommend that they avoid that. Um, and some tricks that we teach them is to just wedge pillows under the left side so it's harder to roll onto that side. Um, but patient education is very important um, after you do the treatment to make sure that they are continuing to do what they need to do. Um, and again, if there are other components like a central nervous system component, uh, we do the habituation training. Uh, we do all of that here at ReadyCare as well. If you have any questions, just give us a call, 516-829-0030.